Hello everyone, this is Derek from Reef Automation. This is episode 11 of the GHL versus Apex series. In this episode, we're going to go over graphs and charts, which are relatively different in both systems and how to access them. So we're going to start with the Apex first. So in order to see charts, you can see on the main screen, you're actually able to scroll and click on specific areas of the graph to get an idea of what it was at a specific time, depending on what you set the data to log based on the setting here in the miscellaneous setup. So if we go to the miscellaneous setup and we have a data log of one minute, it's going to get a data log of one minute. Now, the recommendation has always been about five minutes because that data is going to get uh, quite large and can actually slow down the system when you're connecting to the cloud. So I suggest putting that to about five minutes. So you'll see we have ORP, pH, and temp. Now both these systems haven't actually been hooked up to a tank, but we're able to get charting from them both. So we have temp, pH, ORP, and salt. So if we click on salt, we're going to want to hit the 2.9 here and that'll get us to the graph. Once we see that, you can see that it's been changing, even though we don't have anything plugged in, but this gives you a good representation of what it looks like. At the bottom, it'll show you what the minimum value was, the average value, and the maximum, depending on what you have selected down here. So if you hit one day, this value will change depending on the day. If you hit an hour, this values down here will change depending on the hour. Now you can, of course, um, scroll to a specific time period. It's going to show you seven days at a time, which you can see right here. Now, again, depending on what you set your data limit to, if you set it to a lower limit, potentially this will slow it down a little bit. So the recommendation, like I said, is to set it to five minutes. Now, if you go over here, you can put on your control and alarm limits that you had for that particular device. Now, we haven't reached any of our control or alarm limits on the device, but you can see that it will show you what your limits have been based on your alarm that you set in the probe settings that we did earlier. Now, if you click over here, you can actually change which data you see in the log. So for instance, if we want to see salt, we hit salt, but if we want to see temp, we can hit temp and it will switch to temp. So we'll go back to salt. Now, what's nice about the Apex is you can actually compare. So for instance, we could put temp, we can put pH, we could put ORP, and you can actually compare those values and it will actually show you the minimums and averages for those values during a period of time. What's also nice is you could actually put if a light or a fan was on, it will tell you when it was on, and it can also show your energy consumption as well during that period of time. So you can see at this time, we had a voltage of 120, our salt was 2.9, temp was 20, pH, and you can see everything that was on at Thursday at 5 p.m., as you can see here. So it's pretty nice how the charts work here. But also, again, you're able to get these minimums and maximums down here at the bottom. Um, so if we go on to our output log, which is going to be right here, that is where we see when things have turned on and off. Now, this will only show values if you have enabled the log. So for instance, if we want to know when our return pump was on and off, we'd have to enable the log right here. When you enable the log, it'll then start producing values in your output log. Now, you're only going to want to select specific devices that you want to monitor maybe for testing purposes. You don't want to have it logging every single thing that you're doing because it can again cl uh, clutter and slow down the data that it's collecting. So the recommendation there is to keep that tidy and only put on specific things. Maybe like your email alarm, you might want to log and tell you when your email alarm was going off, which would probably be important or possibly power monitoring, which we went over in the last episode. So now we'll move on to the GHL. So the GHL has something similar. They have a chart up here. In order to enable um, what you see, you actually have to go to the paintbrush icon and then hit the little paintbrush icon, and then you can show and hide specific sensors. 
Now, what I noticed right away about the GHL is you can only chart the sensors. Uh, I don't see a way to chart whether or not a output was on, whether or not a heater was on. It doesn't really give you that um, flexibility to tell you when things were on or off. Now, the GHL does have the ability to compare, as you can see. If I go to the paintbrush and I go to the small paintbrush, I can eliminate and also add specific things to compare to. However, it doesn't have the information at the bottom to tell you, hey, this is your average, this is your maximum, this is your minimum during that period of time. So it's a little um, not as robust as the Apex in providing you that information. Now, another thing that I notice is if I click on this, it doesn't actually go to the chart. Whereas with the Apex, again, it can kind of micromanage into what specifically you want to see. In order to do that, you actually have to click on the sensor over here and then click on chart. And then you can chart that particular device. And again, you can do the same thing. You put a day and time, and then you can do weeks, months, three months, years. Same thing that the Apex does. Now, also similar to the Apex, it does have a logging feature, and you can change the amount of time that it logs. So if you go to the settings of the actual probe itself, this is where you do the sample period, where it's a little bit different on the Apex, where it's a global logging period. This actually logs per value, as you can see here, and I have it set for five minutes. So if you wanted to change the value period, you would click on the date right here. Now we have some values uh, back in August uh, when we had the probes hooked up to some water. So we'll do uh, August there. We'll say done. We'll let the data load here. And we'll change the uh, two for, let's just say, August 15th. And there we have some values. We could do week. We could do day. And currently, we're only seeing the temperature. But we can come up here and actually add comparisons. And then we can see the rest of it. So one thing you'll notice right away, uh, one of the bigger differences between the Apex and GHL is the comparing only compares sensors on the GHL, whereas the Apex, you can compare just about anything, uh, such as an outlet going on, such as, my, like I said earlier, a heater going on. Anything going on, you can actually uh, see a graph of when that goes on. So that's a very nice feature. So if we go back to the dashboard, and click on this guy and you can actually go to full screen and you can also print the chart if you wanted to, which is kind of nice. I didn't see that feature in the Apex. Um, and go back up to here and turn full screen mode off. So that's basically charts and uh, logging on both the Apex and GHL. There's not much more to it. Um, you're able to provide a lot more information on the Apex, whereas in the GHL, it just provides you the sensor information. So it's a little bit different on both of the systems. So if you like this video, go ahead and hit the thumbs up below. And if you haven't subscribed, go ahead and subscribe. To view all of the GHL versus Apex videos, they're right here. And in our next video, we're gonna go over warranties and we're gonna go over some of the support options that both the companies give you. So I look forward to showing you that video. Hopefully you have a great day and thank you for watching.